Hello guys, good day. Welcome to another video lecture in ACP 311, Accounting for Special Transactions. This particular video lecture, we will be discussing about partnership liquidation, which is the last stage in the life of the partnership. Partnership liquidation will be divided into two topics. First is lump sum liquidation, which is the emphasis of this video. And the second one is the installment liquidation, which will be the focus of our next video lecture. So let's start our discussion. When we talk about partnership liquidation, it is the winding up of the business. It is done usually by selling the assets, paying the liabilities, and distributing the remaining cash to the partners. A business which is in the process of converting its assets into cash and making settlement with creditors is said to be in the liquidation process. So again, in the event that the partners decide to terminate its partnership business, they have to liquidate all its assets and liabilities. All the non-cash assets will be converted to cash and pay its obligation. So the focus in partnership liquidation will be the distribution of the remaining cash to the partners and to the other stakeholders like the creditors and other um, stakeholders of the partnership. The basic objectives of a partnership during the liquidation process are to convert the partnership assets to cash or that process is being called as the realization of assets or conversion of non-cash assets into cash to pay off partnership obligations and to, and to distribute cash and any unrealized assets to the individual partners. So the purpose of accounting during this period is to have an equitable distribution of partnership cash to creditors and partners. So in this process, both the partners and the creditors will be, um, will be considered, meaning um, the stake of the creditors and the partners will be considered in the distribution of the remaining cash of the partners. Hence, it is no longer income determination that is focused of accounting but rather the computation of gains or losses on realization of assets, which are to be subsequently allocated among the partners, the payment of liabilities in accordance with the law, and the final distribution of cash to the partners. So again, um, what will be our objective in the partnership liquidation is first the conversion of all non-cash assets into cash and using that cash to pay all the liabilities of the partners and the remaining cash will be distributed among the partners. There are certain rules that is to be followed in the liquidation of the partnership. Namely, first, always allocate and close gains or losses to the partners' capital accounts prior to distributing any cash to the partners. So in times of the conversion of all non-cash assets, meaning you will be selling all of your assets and then if you have um, gains and losses from the conversion of those assets, right away, those assets will be, or those gains and losses will be distributed to the partners using their profit and loss ratio. And then, when the business is liquidated, the partner is entitled to an amount depending upon his capital contribution, his drawing, his share in the net income or loss from operation before liquidation, gains and losses on realization, and the balance of his accounts loan, if any. So by the way, our focus this time is in lump sum liquidation. So that means all your non-cash assets will be converted will be converted into cash in a one-time setting, meaning all of your non-cash assets will be sold at once. Unlike with liquidation in installment, wherein all your assets will be um, will be or all your non-cash assets will be sold on a staggered basis on or on or a piecemeal basis. So again, as I have mentioned earlier, that piecemeal liquidation of a partnership will be discussed in our next video lecture. As a general rule, the cash should be distributed as follows. First, to the outside creditors. So outside creditors, may it be your suppliers, may it be your banks, or from your banks, bank loans, or from the government which 
you have an outstanding liabilities. Second, to partners for loan accounts, payment of the liability of the partners, uh, payment to the liability of the partnership to the, to the partners. And the third one is to partners' capital accounts. So meaning, these are the three um, hierarchy that is to be followed in terms of paying or in the distribution of cash. First, it will be paid to the outside creditors. Second, it will be paid to the partner's loan accounts. And the third one is to partner's capital accounts. So in lump sum liquidation, there are procedures that is to be followed. And there are five steps in that procedure. So first, realization of assets and distribution of gain or loss on realization among the partners based on the profit and loss ratio. So meaning, the first step is the um, conversion. It's the selling of your non-cash assets to um, the third party and the accompanied gain or loss from that um, from that realization of assets will be distributed to the partners as using the profit and loss ratio. The second one is payment of expenses. So payment of expenses from the liquidation process. So whatever expense that is incurred throughout the liquidation process, such, such will also be distributed to the partner's profit using the profit and loss ratio. Third, we have payment of liabilities. Payment of liabilities, whether external liability or internal liability. And then number four, elimination of partner's capital deficiencies if after the distribution of loss on realization, a partner incurs a capital deficiency. So example, partner's share of realization loss exceeds his capital credit, meaning the capital credit of the partner becomes negative. This deficiency must be eliminated by using one of the following methods. So first, if the deficient partner has a loan, it can be used to offset its negative balance. So although... Um, the standard does not actually allow us in financial accounting does not allow us to um, to offset any asset versus liability but in partnership law in terms of liquidation and if the partner has a deficient balance the partnership law allows the right of offset letter B if the deficient partner is solvent make him invest cash eliminate his deficiency so if the partner is solvent, then how can we determine if the partner is solvent, by the way? We could determine if the partner is solvent by comparing its personal assets over its personal liabilities. If its total assets or personal assets is higher than its personal liabilities, then that means that partner is solvent. However, if it's otherwise, then therefore the partner is insolvent. So if that's the case, if the partner is solvent, then the partner should invest additional cash to eliminate the capital deficiency, his or her capital deficiency. And let her see, if the deficient partner is insolvent, let the other partners absorb his deficiency. So this becomes the worst case scenario for the remaining partners na, na a positive balance because they will be absorbing whatever is the deficient or negative capital balance of an insolvent partner. So later on, as we progress with our discussion, we will have an example in each of these cases. And the fifth step, is payment of partners so in order of priority first is payment to loan accounts this is what i have mentioned earlier na internal liabilities which is the liability of the partner of the partnership towards the partners and lastly we have capital accounts to appreciate these concepts let's use this into an example so we have here D, E, and F partnership or D and F, D, E, and F are, are partners in D, E, F partnership. And they um, decided to liquidate the partnership. Before the liquidation, it has an asset of 20,000 cash, 80,000 other assets, liabilities of 28, D loan of 2,000, and D, E, F capital of 9, 21, and 40,000 respectively. Okay, assuming that 
um, all its non-cash assets were sold with positive figure, meaning with a gain, from, from 80,000 carrying amount of its other assets, it was sold, for example, for 100,000, leading into a gain of 20,000. So again, the first step in the liquidation process is the, um, it's the conversion of your non-cash assets into cash. So from 80,000, it was able to be realized at 100. So meaning, we have carrying amount of 80,000, selling price of 100, so therefore there is a gain of 20,000. So that gain of 20,000 will be shared by D, E, and F partners using their profit and loss ratio. So that 20,000 times 40%, so D will be um, credited 8,000, E will also be credited for 8,000, and F will be credited for 4,000. Again, if there is gain from the realization of your non-cash assets, it increases the capital account of the partner. So after the realization, the cash balance would now become 120,000. The next step is um, payment of expenses, but in this particular example, we don't have expenses incurred, so therefore, let's move with the next step, which is the payment of liabilities. So payment of liabilities of 28,000, so therefore, our cash will be reduced by 28 to settle all our liabilities. So therefore, we have a remaining balance of 92,000. So this 92,000 remaining cash will be used to settle the partner's account considering or including their um, loan for D. So this 92,000 will be given to first D in its loan and then 17,000 in its capital, 29,000 for E capital and 44,000 for F. So therefore, after the liquidation process, all of the accounts in the books of the partnership will be zeroed out, meaning um, all of its accounts will be closed, in, including all its assets will now have a zero balance, all its liabilities will have zero balance, not, and all its capital account will also have zero balance. So the journal entry from that particular liquidation would include this one, the journal entry on the realization of other assets. So it was sold for 100,000, so debit for 100,000, credit for other assets of 80,000, and instead of crediting gain on sale of your other assets, you credit directly it to their respective capital balances. So D, E, and F for 8,000, 8,000, 4,000, respectively from their share of the 20,000 gain from sale of other assets. And then journal entry for the payment of your liabilities. The common journal entry upon payment of a liability, debit to liability account, and then credit to cash for 28000 respectively. And then lastly, you have their payment for loan. Actually, you could have separate journal entry for the payment of loan. You have debit to D loan for 2000 and then credit cash for 2000 because the priority says na you will be paying loan first over capital. But in this case, you are also allowed to um, pay it if uh, if you have enough cash naman, you could um, pay it together with its capital. So in this case, it's lumped to um, capital. So it was paid together with the capital. So debit to D loan, upon the, sal uh, upon the settlement of D loan, D, E, F capital respectively of 17, 29, 44,000 respectively. And then credit cash for 92,000. So again, um, this 92,000 remaining cash of the partners will not be distributed to the partners using their profit and loss ratio. But rather, this 92,000 remaining cash of the partnership will be used to settle whatever is the remaining capital balance of the partner. So this is 17, 29, and 44,000. So you should take note of that. Next, let's proceed with our case 2 that includes loss on realization. So earlier, we have um, a gain of 20,000, but this time, your 80,000 other current other assets that was realized for only 60. 
that means we have a loss of 20,000. So that loss of 20,000 will again be distributed to our partners using their profit and loss ratio. And again, if there's a loss, it will reduce the total capital of our partners. So D will be sharing 8,000. E will also share 8,000 from that loss and F will share 4,000. So after the realization of that other assets with a loss of 20, the capital accounts of the partners becomes 1,000, 13, and 36,000 respectively. Next, we have payment of our liabilities of 28,000. So we will be settling our liabilities for 28. 80,000 cash minus 28. So we'll have 52,000 cash remaining after the settlement of our liabilities. And again, just like earlier, 52,000 will be used in settling the loan to D and to the capital accounts of D, E, and F partners. So same journal entry, debit cash, and then credit to other assets. But this time, we'll have debit accounts to the partners because again, they have loss. No? They have shared loss in the partnership upon the conversion of non-cash assets. And then we have payment of liabilities, debit to liabilities, credit to cash for 28000 And lastly, settlement of the loan and their capital respectively for 2000 1000 13, and 36000 And then credit to cash for 52000 Let's proceed with our next case. This time, let's consider loss on realization resulting into capital deficiency to a partner, but this time with a loan account. So assume that the partner assets were realized at 55,000, resulting for a loss of 25,000. So your 80,000 other assets that was realized only for 55,000, resulting into a loss of 25,000. Again, that loss of 25,000 will be shared by D, E, and F using their profit and loss. Then, sharing D and F, a D and E of 10,000 respectively, and F for 5,000 for that loss. And then after that, same process, payment of liability, so you have 28,000. So after that, settlement, okay, by the way, before, uh, before the settlement of liability, take, please observe that the Capital account of D becomes negative or becomes deficient from 9,000 to 1,000. So therefore, D will now have a deficient capital of 1,000. So before we'll, we will be addressing that negative balance of D, we'll settle the liabilities first. So we have 75,000 minus 28. After the settlement of the liability, your total balance of cash becomes 47,000. Now this time, let's address D negative 1,000 na capital balance ni D. This time, since D has a receivable to the partnership, again, according to the partnership law, it could exercise the right of offset. So, pwede si D makuha og 1,000 from its receivable from the partnership para ma-zero out ang iyahang capital balance. So, let's get 1,000 from D loan and transfer it to its negative balance of 1,000 in order to zero out or to, again, uh, elimin eliminate the negative balance of D in its capital. So, after that, ang loan na lang ni D will have a balance of 1,000. So we also have a balance ato ang cash ng 47,000. So that 47,000 will be used in distributing or in settling that loan to D. Na 1,000 na lang ang nabilin. And then 11,000 for E and 35,000 for F. Again, from that 47, only 1,000 na lang ang ma-receive ni D. Kay zero naman ang iyahang capital balances. So the unique journal entry for this um, same process of journals or same entries in the books of the partnership except this time na na ay additional journal entry which is for the transfer of account from loan to capital. So this is the journal entry to record the application of this loan to his capital deficiency. So ang iyang loan mo gamay by 1,000. So from 2,000, na mo na lang 1,000 because of this entry. And then ang iyang capital account from negative 1,000 na mo zero because of this 
credit to the capital of 1,000 as well. So after this entry, nawala na ang negative balance ni D. And from the realization of asset down to settlement of the liability and the payment of the capital account of the remaining partners, performa journal entry will just be the same, just like the previous cases that we had discussed earlier. Now, let's have case 4. Case 4 this time includes loss on realization resulting into capital deficiency to a solvent partner. So, although capital deficient ang partnership or ang partner itself, but solvent siya. Meaning, its personal assets is higher than or greater than its personal liability. So, in this case, the solvent partner with capital deficiency can invest additional cash in the partnership. Okay, considering now that the assets of 80,000 earlier was only sold for 49,500, then resulting into a loss of 30,500. So again, just like the process earlier, that 30,500 will be distributed first to the partners using their profit and loss ratio. So D and E will share 12,000 each and then F will share 6,100. So after that realization, the total cash becomes 69,500 and its capital accounts for D will have negative 3,200. So this will be eliminated later on and E has 88 na lang and for F, 33,900 na lang. So next step is to... Um, Settle the liabilities. So we have 69,500, reduce it into 28, reduce it by 28 for the settlement of the liability. So after the settlement of the liability, ang balance na lang ng cash will be 41,500. And then you have your loan still of 2,000, and then negative 3 to still of D, and 88 and 33,900 for F. Okay, this time, take note that we still have D loan. Okay? So the first thing in the elimination of that negative 3,200 will be the offs offsetting of 2,000 from the loan. So gamiton na nato ang 2,000 ng loan ni partner. So ang receivable ni partner at was ang gamiton, i-offset sa nato before siya mag-invest o additional cash. So ang yang loan is only 2,000, not enough to cover the negative balance of 3,200. So after ma offset na alang gihapoy negative 1, 2, that necessitates an additional investment of 1,200. So mag additional invest siya o 1,200. Meaning mag invest siya o additional cash of 1,200 sa partnership. Para ma zero out ang iyahang capital balance. So ang after the additional investment, the total balance of the partnership will be 42,000. 700. And this 42,700 will be distributed to the partners, remaining partners, kina a positive balance, which is si E, o si F. So E will share 88 8, and F will share 33,900. Again, take note na si 42,700 will not be distributed by E to F using this 40% and 20% ratio, but rather it will be distributed using their capital balances, ending capital balances. So, unique journal entry for this is the additional entry to record the additional investment of partner D to eliminate his capital deficiency. So, debit cash, 1,200 and debit D capital for additional 1,200. Okay? So, just like the previous sample or sample case, same will be the pro forma to be used in the settlement or the realization of your cash, the recording of your loss, and then the settlement of liability, the offsetting of loan, and then you have your um, payment of capital balance to the remaining capital, uh, remaining partner with positive balances. And Fifth case, this time there is still a loss but the partner with capital deficiency is an insolvent. Meaning, the partner has higher liability over its personal assets. So therefore, it cannot invest 
to the partnership because it has no means to invest. Kaya mas dako pa ang iyahang liabilities over its assets. So, again, first step, ibaligi ang, par ang assets, ang other assets, which uh, which is ano, non-current asset. So, ang cost is 80, pero it was only realized for 49,500, giving a higher loss this time. So, that loss of um, how much is that loss? 80,000 minus 49,500 will be divided by D, E, and F respectively. So, D will share 12,2 from that loss, 12,2 for E again, and 614 F. So, if you have noticed here, we have 3,200 steel na lo, uh, negative balance for D and then E and F respectively. Next is the payment of liability, same earlier. And then, let's address na the, ano, let's address na the 3, 2. Ang difference, ani sa case 4 is that, sa case 4, nag-invest ng additional 1, 2. But this time, since dili maka-invest og additional 1, 2, si, ano, si new part, uh, I mean si D, ang partner nga na deficiency ang mag-absorb sa 1, 2 nga loss will be the remaining partner. So again, after the exhaustion of the D loan, or the receivable of D in the partner, na naapagihapon siya yung 1-2 na negative balance. So, since again, D cannot invest anymore cash in the partnership, therefore, that 1-2 will be shared by E and F respectively. So, again, how would E and F share 1-2? So, they will be sharing 1-2 using their new PNL excluding the share of D. So therefore, 40% to 20%. So ang share ni E will be 40 over 60 times 1, 2. So E will share 800. And then F, 20 over 60 times 1, 2. So he will also share for 400. So again, take note if the partner with a capital deficiency is an insolvent, the other partner will be or the other partners will be the one to absorb the remaining deficiency so that means the deficiency will be um, will be reducing the capital account of the other partners so after this so ang capital ang cash balance will now be 41500 so 41500 will be distributed na to e and f respectively for 8000 and 33500 so, unique journal entry here. How did we come up with um, the capital, na, the amount of capital na i-reduce kay E and F? Again, as mentioned earlier, we have new fraction of 4 over 6 and 2 over 6 respectively times 1,200 for E and F. So, a total of 1, 2. So, unique entry for this case is the absorption of the remaining capital deficiency of D. So, para ma-zero out ang capital deficiency ni D nga 1, 2, so i-absorb siya ni E and F. So, again, since i-absorb siya, magamay ang capital ni E and F. So, we have debit to E and F capital for 800 and 400,000, uh, for 800 and 400 only. And D capital for 1,200. To record the absorption of this deficiency by E and F. Okay, this time, let's have another case. What if the partnership is insolvent, but partners are personally solvent? So that means the total assets of the partnership is lesser than its total liabilities. Or in short, mas dako pa ang liabs kaysa sa assets ni partnership. Pero ang iyang mga partners are personally solvent. Okay, what is the rule upon liquidation? If the partnership is insolvent, which means that all available cash is insufficient to pay creditors at least once or perhaps all of the partners will have deficiencies will exceed the unpaid liabilities. So if the partner or partners with capital deficiencies pay the required amounts, the partnership will have enough cash to pay its liabilities in full. However, in accordance with the law, the, the creditors may demand payment from any partner regardless of whether his capital accounts show a debit balance or a credit balance. It should be noted that in terms of the relationship with creditors, the partnership is not viewed as a separate entity. So again, in this case, if the partnership has 
more than liabilities over its assets and then the partners are able naman to pay additional cash in the partnership to settle the and to settle the remaining liabilities then that means they can do so okay they can do so however on the point of view of the the creditors ang mga creditors pwede niya sing loan bisan kinsa sa mga partners so bisan pa og credit balance or na debit balance ang mga partner pero again whoever ang mubayad whoever ang mubayad sa creditor for example si A ang mibayad sa tibuok na remaining nga utang sa partnership then A will be ano A will be reimbursed by other partners so A will receive payment from other partners so dili pwede nga since si A man ang gi paningla ni creditor siya ang mo shoulder sa tanan so dili pwede because dili siya pwede internally pero pwede siya externally on the point of view of the creditor pwede niya sing loan ang entire amount each of the partner or any of the partner pero upon payment of that partner to the creditor iyang sing loan na pud ang uban nga mga partners okay to illustrate assume that L M and N who are who share profit and loss equally present the following statement of financial position just prior to liquidation so you have their cash of 8000 other assets of 42 giving a giving a total assets of 50000 and we also have liabilities of 33000 and then LM and capital respectively of 3 uh, 9 5 and 3000 now the other assets with a carrying amount of 42000 now this one are sold for 19500 so that means we have a loss of 22000 500. So again, same procedure earlier, these 22,500 will be distributed to LM, LM and M using their profit and loss ratio. And then, the total cash of 27,500 is paid to the creditors. Okay? If you have noticed, pila ang cash tato after the subtle, after the realization of other assets. So after nato nabaligya ang other assets, nabaligya lang nato ng 42,000 for 19,500. So, 19,500 plus 8,000, ang atuan lang cash nga nabilin is 27,500, pero ang atong utang is 33. So, ang entire 27,500, ibayad na to na sa atuang utang na 33,000. Pero, wala pa na impasta na ng atong utang, kay naapay difference of how much, napay balance nga 5,500. Okay? After the distribution of that 22,500 loss, partners M and N have capital deficiencies of 2, 5, and 4, 5 respectively. So if M and N pay the amount of their capital deficiencies totaling 7,000, then the partnership will use that said amount to pay the remaining liabilities of 5, 5 and give 1, 5 to L and settlement in his equity. Again, um, to, to, I know, I know guys, to appreciate this, let's um, prepare a statement of liquidation so you have here uh, balances okay cash other assets liabilities and then their capital accounts so before liquidation we have 8000 nga cash 42 nga other assets liabilities of 33 and then 953 nga capital accounts again your 42000 nga other assets was only realized for 195 gibaligya lang siya for 19500 so that means there's a loss and that loss, we divide using 1 is to 3 for all of the partners or equally. So they will share each 7,500. So after that, nanay negative balance CN of 4,500. Take note guys, we assume that all of them, L, M, and N are all, in, are all solvent. Okay, continuing the illustration, our remaining balance of cash will be 27,500. But take note, the next step is... Settlement of liabilities. Ang atuang liabilities is 33,000. Pero, ang atong cash is only 27,500. So, therefore, naapay balance ang atong liabilities. No? Naapay balance nga 5,500. Pero, wala na tay cash. Okay. This time, since ang atuang mga partners are able man to invest cash, so, si M o si N, nga na ay negative balances, mag-invest Og 25 og 45 equal to their um, capital deficiency as additional investment 
to the partnership in order to zero out their um, capital deficiency. So after sa pag-invest nila og 7,000, nanatay balance nga cash nga 7,000. So katong cash nga 7,000, mauna po ito, ito ang gamiton, pambayad sa atong balance nga 5,500. Okay? Balance nga 5,500. So after the settlement of that liability, so zero na atong liability. Yeah, pila na lang man ang nabilin sa atong cash. Ang nabili na lang sa atong cash is 1,000. 500. So, this 1,500 will be used to settle the positive balance of L nga 1,500. Okay? 1,500. Okay, that is the accounting kung na ay, ano, kung na ay, um, mas dako nga utang ang partnership kaysa sa iyahang assets. So, by the way, Si L o si M, katong gimension ako ganina, ang 5-5, for example, si X ang creditor, aning 5-5, pwede niya sing loan si L, si M o si M. Bisan asa sa ilaha, bisan pag 1-5 na lang na ang kay L, or bisan pa o um, negative balance na kay M o kay N, pwede na sing loan ni creditor X, si L o si M, or si N for, for that 5,500. And then, for example, gibayaran ni N ang tibuok 5-5, Gibayaran ni N ang tibuok 5-5, then mag, ano lang, mag, um, magpa-reimburse lang si N sa share ni M o si, sa share ni L. Okay? Sige, let's proceed with our next na case. Our next case is, the partnership is insolvent and partners are personally insolvent. Okay, this will be hard because both the partnership and the partners are Insolvent. So, meaning, mas dako ang ilahang respective ng mga liabilities over their assets. So, what will be the procedure? In the preceding illustration, we assume that the partners were personally solvent and therefore able to pay their capital deficiencies. We shall now consider the case wherein one or more the partners are insolvent. So, this time, the situation raises a question as to the relative rights of two groups of creditors, namely the creditors of the partnership and the personal creditors of the partners. Okay, who will prevail? Either is, is it's either the creditors of the partnership or ang creditors sa mga personal sa ilang mga personal na mga utang sa mga mga partners. The relative rights of these two groups of creditors are governed by the partnership law which provides that the assets of the partnership are first available to his personal creditors. Okay? With, again, partnership law provides that the assets of the partnership are first available to his personal creditors. So, ang, ang assets the partnership will be first available sa creditors sa partnership. If after the debts of the partnership have been paid in full and some assets still remain in the partnership, the creditors of a partner have a claim against the assets of the partnership only up to the extent of the, his share. Okay, kung naapa daw, um, nabilin nga asset ang partnership upon um, settlement of all the partnership liabilities. And therefore, katung mga, na, katung mga creditor sa mga partner will also have the right to take that asset in the partnership but only up to the extent of the share sa mga partners. After the personal creditors of a partner have been paid in full from his personal assets, any remaining assets is available to partnership creditors regardless of whether the partner's capital account show a credit or debit balance. The claims of creditors of the partnership on the separate property of a partner are permitted only when these creditors are unable to obtain payment from partnership. So again, let's use this concept into an illustration. Now let us say we have here A, B, and C who share profits and losses equally have the following statement of financial position just prior to liquidation. So you have 10 and 100 assets a total of 110 and liabilities and equity of 60, 5, 15, and 30 respectively. Now in this case, Na apoy, personal assets and personal liabilities ang mga partners na to. We have A, B, and C. If you have noticed, okay, A is solvent, 100 and then 25. 
So, solvency A. How about B? Break even. Equal ang assets, equal ang liabilities. And then, CC ang worst because insolvency. Yeah. 60 ang personal liability and then 5,000 ang iyahang personal assets. Now, other assets were sold for 40,000 resulting to a loss of 60. So, gibaligya lang daw ang 100,000 for 40 loss giving a partnership loss of 60,000. And the total cash of um, that amount is 50,000 is used to pay creditors. Dari a 50,000. Which, oh, after which, an unpaid amount of 110 still exists. Okay? A 10,000. 10,000, not 110. Still exists. So, the statement of liquidation showing how the 10,000 unpaid liabilities will be shown as follows. So, money ang iyahang statement of liquidation. So, again, um, put first the balances before liquidation. So, na ay 10, 100, 60, 5, 15, and 30 respectively. So, again, they share profit and loss equally. So, ang PNL daw, again guys, kinsa, si A dari is solvent, si B break even, meaning equal ang assets and liabilities niya, and then si C is insolvent. Okay, so realize the assets, gibaligya now ang assets for 40, thus giving the partnership 60,000 loss. So 60 divide 3, kay equal man ang distribution, so each of them will be receiving a loss of 20,000 each. So after that loss distribution, si A, B, will suffer a negative balance of 15,000 and 5,000 respectively. Now, if you have noticed, guys, si A earlier, pwede siya maka-invest kay solvent man siya. Si B, dili siya maka, um, dili siya maka, uh, again, equal man siya. I equal ang iyang share. So, um, so, B this time wouldn't be able to, ano guys, to invest because wala man siya other means to invest as well. So first let's account first ano let's account muna yung payment of our liabilities. So payment of our liabilities. So we have 60,000 na liabilities guys. So after the settlement of our after the realization of our non-cash asset, our total cash has a balance of 50,500, okay? 50,500. So that uh, 50,000, that's not 50,500, but 50,000. So, that 50,000 will be used in settling partially the liabilities. So, um, after the payment ng liabilities, na lang tay balance na 10,000. And again, negative na 15 and 5,000 respectively. So, here, balik tayo kay A. Since si A is a solvent partner, A will be investing additional cash in the partnership for 15,000. So, mag-invest siya ng 15,000. So, um, nanatay, available cash nga 15. Then, ma-zero out na ang capital balance ni A. So, that 15,000, pwede na to na siya gamitin to settle the 10,000 remaining liability that we have. So, bayad na, na to ang 10,000. So, nanatay balance na 5,000. So, in this case, napatay negative na 5,000 and naatay 10,000 na positive or C. Take note na wala na tay share kay A. But this time, we will have to share this 5,000 loss to uh, 5,000 deficiency of B to A and C. So, ato siyang i-distribute kay A and C. Since again, wala may means. Dil, wala, dilit man solvent si B. Break even man siya. Wala siya cash na pwede i-invest. So, therefore, kanang negative ka 5,000 will be shared by C and A. So, they will share it equally as well. No? So, 5,000 divide 2. So, 2, 5 will be shared by A. And then, 2, 5 will be shared by C. So, after that additional loss to A and C, na na additional deficiency. C, A na naman na 2, 5. And then, ang capital balance ni C becomes 7,500. So, again, in this case, natay balance ng 5,000. Since solvent again ni C, A, mag-invest na po siya additional na 2,500. So, after that, nanatay cash nga 7.5 and this 7.5 will be used again to settle the con, uh, the settle to settle the capital account of C also nga 7,500. So, this will be the entire concept if one of the partners 
in a of an insolvent partner is also an insolvent no very ano very complicated si partnership insolvent and then one of the partners in the partnership is also insolvent so magsuffer talaga ang mga solvent partners because they will absorb whatever is the capital deficiency of that insolvent partner okay to continue so again these are the explanations so you can refer to these items i suppose that i have already mentioned this in the discussion earlier so in as much as a is a solvent he can eliminate his capital deficiency by investing cash for amount equal to such so yun yun kanina sa 15000 nga negative balance ni a so nag invest siya og additional 15000 so no problem and then s is personally insolvent to so the solvent partners a and c will incur proportionate additional losses to eliminate b's capital deficiency so b is deficient so therefore ang katong 5000 nga loss gi share ni a and then c and then a is still personally solvent so he can again invest cash to eliminate his capital deficiency in the partnership and then number 4 the amount paid to c may have to be used to pay his personal creditors in as much as he is personally solvent so those are the items that can be used to explain the transactions earlier so again those are the um, important points to be considered in the liquidation of a partnership on a lump sum basis. As a recap, again, our objective is to distribute the cash remaining of the partnership to the partners and to the other stakeholders. No? Na dapat fair ang distribution. Walay utang ang dilip mabayaran. And then, walay capital na dili mabayaran na as well. So, depende na sa cases whether ang assets ba were realized more than or below the market value or if the partners or the partnership is solvent or insolvent. So, if you would like again to have additional reference for, the, for our discussion in partnership liquidation, lump sum basis, you can refer to the books of Dayag, Guerrero, and other partnership accounting books, practical accounting, practical accounting two books, or advanced financial accounting and reporting books. Okay, this time, I have here a bonus question. So this question is only... Okay, so question, in what order are partnership assets distributed to partners under the partnership law? Okay, in what order are partnership assets to be, dis be distributed to the partners under the partnerships, under the partnership law? So, unsa ang hierarchy on which assets are to be distributed to the partners? So if you know the answer, comment down below and upon Giving the correct answer, if you have the correct answer, you will have the chance to win 30 pesos load. Okay? However, only subscribers of this channel will be given a chance to win 30 pesos. So the winner of this question, no, we will have we will randomly pick that lucky winner and will be announced on our next video lecture. So once again, this is Sir Zhao. And see you on our virtual class. Thank you.